Hey everybody, so I decided to make a video about the punk uh, genre. So punk is a scene that I was into for a very, very long time. I played in three bands, four if you count high school, which was kind of just a trash band that I was in where we were figuring out how to play. Uh, recently I've been poking back into the scene, trying to get uh, back into it, seeing if there's anything worth it. Uh, there's a few things I've noticed about it. It's a little bit more mm, inclusive in the bands that it in brings under its umbrella now. Um, I've changed over the years, and the punk scene's changed over the years. Uh, there's several videos I've noticed on YouTube dedicated to the history of it now. And I'm kind of coming back into it. Um, I'm seeing that there's a lot of bands now that are openly accepted that previously were kind of not. Um, so that's interesting. I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, and how it's more inclusive of different branching styles. I'm not sure what to make of that yet, but I'll talk about it. Okay, so who am I? So I'm a 43-year-old man. I was born and raised in Southern California. I was born in L.A. I grew up uh, in a town called Pomona. Uh, we had what was the second street scene, the which I grew up uh, really close to that street, um, like six blocks from there. We had the glass house, monkeys to go, uh, CW Skate Shop. Now there's characters there on Second Street. Uh, I came into the scene in the early '90s. I started first uh, playing metal, and I I played bass. I only ever wanted to play bass because I thought it was a cool instrument. It looked cool. It sounded cool. I never tried to play guitar. Never wanted to play guitar. Um, so bass is always what I wanted to do. Um, and I found for metal, bass was too easy. It was mostly about guitar and drums. So I got kind of bored with that, and then I came across Rancid, which I thought was, Out Come the Wolves was the first album I got, and I thought that was just the coolest thing ever in the history of music, and Matt Freeman was just, a, off of that first track, I was sold. And then, once I got into Rancid, I started getting into other bands like The Misfits, The Exploited, GBH, uh, which eventually got me into Street Punk, which is where I found my home. So I was in a band called Sulphur in high school. Um, we did end up playing at the drama theater at the high school, which is kind of cool when you look at it. Um, I have that performance on VHS. It is not digitized, so I need to do that. Um, that this was in like 1996. We played at our high school, which is pretty cool. Now, I don't know that a lot of bands get to do that. Um, then later, uh, when I, I joined a band called Trouble Bound, I was living in El Paso, Texas from 1999 to 2002. In 2002, we released uh, our EP um, and toured four states. Uh, while I was in that band, I got to open up for Agnostic Front, TSOL, The Casualties, Global Threat, Total Chaos, a handful of other bands that I can't remember. Um, and during this time, I was going back to California every summer, and uh, for the holidays, I was going back. Uh, later, I was in a band called The Grimes. When I, I moved back to California uh, in 2002. Um, basically, the tour that I took with Troublebound, our last show was at the Anarchy Library in Downey. And after the show, I just stayed in California. That was our last show of the tour. And the guys decided they did not want to continue. So the band broke up after I left the band at the end of the tour. Uh... Then we, I got into the Grimes, based out of Rancho. We got to open for Agnostic Front, The Habit, Clairvoyance, Abrasive Wheels. We played at the Showcase Theater twice. Um, maybe, I think they played it once before I joined the band. Um, and that fizzled out in 2006. We also put out two EPs. Um, I think one was in 03 or 04, and the other one was, I want to say, 2005. Um, both both Troublebound and The Grimes, we've discussed maybe having a reunion show, but I don't know if it's ever going to happen. Then for about a year, I was in Darling Dynamite, which is with Pistol Grip's old guitarist. Uh, musically, I think this was the most sophisticated band that I was in. It was unfortunate. Um, we were never able to find a stable drummer, and the, the singer eventually left, and then the guitarist decided he didn't want to do it anymore, so... Um, it was a shame because I really liked that band. I was in one other band for one show and I, that I practiced with for maybe a couple weeks uh, called Colorstone, which was a 90s grunge 
esque band. Um, but I, I was going through some other issues at the time, and I ended up leaving the band. And in general, I left the scene around 2011. I kind of retired from music. I've been contemplating picking up the bass, but uh, probably I won't. Anyways, enough rambling on about me. So here's kind of how I view the generic timeline of punk. You had, like, in 77, the birth of punk. And this, this yellow line is sort of is street punk. It, I don't, it's never sur- really surpassed sort of the main general uh, punk rock. It was like a lull in the, in the late 80s to early 90s. And in the mid-90s is really when uh, punk exploded, like The Offspring with Rancid, uh, with Green Day. All that took off, and then it seemed as though street punk lagged behind it. Because I think the kids first had to get into this... And then started to delve deeper, much like I did. And then you saw the emergence of street punk. I was deep embedded in this scene during this sort of tide. Um, I feel like it fizzled out around 2006. Um, I think late 2000s is when the Showcase Theater closed, unfortunately. Um, And then I feel like it's kind of like around here. The, The last 10 years are kind of a mystery to me. So this is kind of the time period that I want to cover. So, punk... So subgenres and sub branches are kind of like the main sort of thing that everybody wants to talk about. And I, I've tried to organize this in such a way that uh, hopefully it makes sense. So I'm going to go from left to right. So pop punk is the first one. And yes, Blink-182 is in here. I never really was able to stand that band. And I still, th- this entire sort of sub subgenre for a long time I thought should not be considered punk. But over time, this is one of the changes that I've found. Um, I think this genre just seems to be accepted by everyone, so I have to include it in here. Um, despite my personal feelings, I think uh, they're a part of this now. So, so yes, I put Blink-182 uh, in the same category as Sum 41, Avril Lavigne, yes, New Found Glory, yes, The Offspring 2, Alkaline Trio, Good Charlotte, I didn't list every single band ever here, just more some examples. Then you have what's called bubblegum punk, which is bands like Unwritten Law, Atari's, MXPS, Saves the Day. Um, a lot of this bubblegum punk, I think, mixed with like kind of a gothic punk, sort of, in my opinion, branched off into emo. Emo is not punk. Emo is something else. So, not going to get into that. Um, but bands with this kind of... The, the high-pitched singer likes to sing about girls and, oh, uh, or, you know, it, that's bubblegum punk. So next we have what I like to call jock punk. And there are two sub-branches of jock punk. There is hardcore. So hardcore bands like Agnostic Front, Sick of It All, H2O, Strife, Adamantium, Bad Brains, Fugazi. Fugazi, you could argue, is vanilla punk. Um, but I think the hardcore... I, I feel like the hardcore crowd sort of dominates at their shows. Um, you could also make a case that Agnostic Front might be Oi or something like that. But I, I think they themselves consider themselves hardcore and they put the NYCHC all over their stuff. So I, I put them here. And the next one is skate punk. Yes, that is a sport kind of a, a thing, and I put it under jock punk. Um, and yes, Pennywise goes in here. The, I think the guys themselves may not be jocks or whatever, but this this whole area is what I call the bro zone, or AKA the douche canoes. I've never really liked this crowd, um, especially the hardcore crowd. I think is full of a bunch of bullies that like to punk a bunch of other kids that are half their age and half their size. A lot of these dudes are the dudes in the Dickies with the raised truck and the straight build hat um, who think they are the shit and are 30 and still live with their mom and go punk a 15-year-old kid with the mohawk who's half their size. So that is my issue with sort of a lot of the hardcore scene. Skate punk... I just hate the sound. Pennywise, uh, I think, is the one exception. These other bands, they're just not for me. I think they all sound the same. 
Um, some people put no effects here in Bad Religion. Uh, I do not consider no effects skate punk. I do not consider Bad Religion skate punk. I consider these bands here skate punk. They have a very, very similar sound. Many of these, I think, I don't know if all these specifically, I didn't research. Like, I know Pennywise is from Ramosa. A lot of these other bands, a lot of them I think are from Southern California. And I found this whole sound bland. And it was for guys that didn't really delve any deeper into punk rock than this right here. And I always felt out of place here. I felt like... I don't know. I, I I don't like any of these bands. Murphy's Law, there's a couple songs I like. Um, Pennywise sings the Bro National Anthem, which is called Bro Him. So these shows are just full of bros. I probably will not go to any of these shows. I've opened for Agnostic Front twice. Like I said, they have they have a lot of like punk stuff in there, oi stuff in there. So the two at the top are, you could debate whether they belong here or not. Pennywise, though, is skate punk. They're probably the godfathers of skate punk. More than Bad Religion, again, I don't think, I don't put them in this category. So this right here is what I call the gateway zone. A lot of people come into punk here in, in these three subgenres, and many of them never leave, but some will start delving deeper. Um... And some people just won't. They'll just live here, and this is where they live. So next, you have Ska Punk. So these are bands like Op Ivy, Voodoo Glow Skulls, The Suicide Machines, Interrupters, Less Than Jake, Goldfinger. I'm not really a fan of Less Than Jake and Goldfinger. And when I was doing putting this together, I went and saw... I have, I have, uh, I have a Less Than Jake CD. I don't think I've listened to that thing in 20 years. Goldfinger, I, I had two CDs in uh, my box... Yes, I say CDs, you could tell I'm 43. Um, I think I own like 700 CDs, maybe 800. And I still have them all in a box in my closet. Uh, Goldfinger, again, was another band back when I was just trying to get my hands on any type of punk rock. And I think I, I heard them, I don't remember, maybe through Tony Hawk's. I, I don't remember. I was just, I went through a phase where anything, even, even all these skate punk bands here, I, I was consuming it. I just anything. I was I was looking, I was looking for my home. I was into punk, but I was still looking for my home. So next is what I call vanilla punk, which is just notice it's right in the middle. This is like your your generic rank and file punk. So here's where I put bands like Rancid, Bad Religion, Black Flag, X, Sex Pistols, Ramones, Dead Kennedys, Vandals. These would be like I, I'd say in the in the early nineties to like late 2000s and even today these are like the standard most probably the most common patches you'll see on people's jackets and skateboards stickers back of somebody's car these are like i mean the punk right like i i like a lot i like almost all these bands again these are the ones that i came to mind so you can tell like these are probably the bands i listen to and green day is here green day themselves says they're not a punk band uh some people would say Green Day belongs over here with Blink-182. Um, there are several things with punk. Um, there's aesthetic, there's music, um, and there's kind of like sort of the message, the themes. Even though Green Day got big, to tell you the truth, I never felt like they compromised their sound all that much or they changed their aesthetic all that much. I've always thought... To this day, they still have kind of a punk aesthetic. They changed a little bit, you know, now with the, later or later with the eyeliner and their haircuts went just from like, I don't know what you call that, just a regular hair buzz cut or whatever they had. Um, I think they belong here. They would say that they're not. I, so I don't know what they call themselves, but I, I think they belong here. Then you have what are called the Dark Cousins. And this is not, uh, I like a lot of these bands. I, this is the area where I don't delve into it too, too much. So leave your comments below if uh, you guys want to school me on on this. So the dark, what are the, who are the Dark Cousins? The Dark Cousins are Gothic Punk and Psycho Billy. This is what I consider the Dark Cousins. So Gothic Punk, Misfits, Damned, Cramps, Bauhaus, Killing Joke, Joy Division. So 
this gothic punk stuff is a weird area. Some people will call this post-punk. Some people will call it, well, some of these are garage bands, garage rock, whatever. It's sort of this uh, wheelhouse, right, is, is what I would call gothic punk. Cycle Billy is, is the offspring of rockabilly and punk rock, which is a lot more easier to def- is a lot more easy to define. Not necromantics, Tiger Army, Devil's Brigade, Creepshow, the Meteors, Horror Pops. And basically there's a ton. I, I, I actually really love Psycho Billy. It's just cool. I love the speed. I like I like fast, aggressive music that doesn't sound like it's written for Jack. That's what I like. And Psycho Billy is just cool. I like Rockabilly too. Um, so I, and I like punk. So of course I would like Psycho Billy. Um, I think Psycho Billy's cool. And finally, you have Street Punk. This is my jam. This is where I finally found my home. Like I said, I started with with Rancid and Misfits, and I slowly started my, my, make my way this way. I would delve this way every so often. Like I think I went and saw Saves the Day once. I think they played El Paso. I don't remember where. It was just, I remember, yeah, I think it was El Paso because I remember being at the show and thinking like, damn, it's either this band or nothing. And while I was watching them live, I was like, I think nothing would have been better. Um, but yeah, Street Punk. So uh, Street Punk, I broke it down more because this was kind of like where I lived. So I broke it into uh, four and there's Oi, Chaos Punk. Pogo and Crust Punk is how I broke it down. I'm not going to get into UK 82 and 77 because this group here can be the most pretentious. Um, I knew people who were like, I only listen to UK 82. I only listen to 77. And a lot of it, I think, is just offshoots of Oi and these weird, very specific sub branches of sub genres. I don't think I've got to break it down that far. Um, so who's. What's Oi? The Blood, Angelic Upstarts, which I think some people call this 77 or UK82. I don't know. The Business, Blitz, Coxbar, Accident, Champ 69. These kinds of band, bands here, Hudson Falcon. Uh, you could see uh, in general. Uh, oh, did I put. Yeah, I did put the Foreskins. So, Chaos Punk, uh, these bands, uh, Street Punks. Some people call this like. You know how I have Vanilla Punk here? This would be Vanilla Street Punk, right? I put Chaos Punk to sort of break it apart. But really, this would be Vanilla Street Punk. I put Chaos Punk because that's what they call these guys, Chaos Punks. Um, Export Casualties, Global Threat, uh, Oxymoron, Clip 45, Lower Class Brats, these types of bands, Virus, Pistol Grip, Less Stitches, Verrucker's Discharge, The Bodies. Uh, Pogo Punk really um, fused... Uh, I, I feel like it's like it kind of like Oi. The Japanese got their hands on Oi and then mixed the chaos punk aesthetic with Oi, and then you end up with bands like the Discox, the Defectives, uh, the Erections, Antidote, which is from Europe, uh, Spiky Bits, big big Japanese influence here. I really like a lot of these bands. I love the sound. It's so fun to um, like pogo dance to this, and m- many of these particularly uh, chaos punk bands it's interesting because these vanilla punk bands in particularly rancid which i'll talk about the most they have songs from all over the spectrum individual songs and and you could argue albums um and i would say it's the same here under the umbrella of street punk many of these bands like casualties have pogo songs like ugly bastards is a pogo song you could you could tell this is very very specific and this is 100% a music choice. Um, it's it's that sort of driving, um, bounce up and down um, kind of riff sound. Um, it's just it's just a bouncy sound. I don't know how else to describe it. That's where that's where pogo comes from. Um, a couple of these bands, I think. A couple of these bands, I think the virus has got one or two pogo songs. Oxymoron. Um, you could you could argue that most of their songs uh, fall under this. Then you have Crust Punk, which is bands like Os Rotten, Nausea, Doom, Adam Kinder, Poxy. A lot of these bands are highly political. Many will call this like uh, I've heard it called like what was anarcho punk. Um, so anarcho punk is kind of I, mean, I would say it's about here as well. So a lot of crossover too. A lot of these bands will have Oi songs. Um, 
and crust tends to be kind of its own mm, they don't delve as much into other other things so a couple of things that i will say so going to the right you get deeper and deeper into the scene your the sound gets more extreme it's less mainstream sound or extreme whatever you call it and the aesthetic gets a bit crazier and crazier a lot of these pop punk bands are just like <laughs> someone who went to hot topic or something this might be here like something cute that some upper middle class 14 year old girl wants to listen to here you got your douche canoes and here you start getting more into like okay you, you might have to take a little bit of effort to delve into this and you have your your this is your your rank and file vanilla there's just no other way um to think about it dead center in the middle um you need you go deeper and deeper and deeper until you get here um i will say offspring started over here um and they straight up changed their sound so i they did start over here but i think unlike green day i think offspring did change their sound they changed labels and just straight up changed their sound and i'm sorry but you know a lot of people for years and i was one of those people who said they sold out you know now i guess they're not sellouts but i think the only thing that's changed is before i think the line was some would put it here it depends who you are like some of these people here in street punk anything outside anything to the left of this is is it well maybe not psycho billy and and maybe not gothic but even even these guys over here some of these bands have called even here they call them sellouts so i think we've now included these two kind of groups that were excluded before um so blink 182 is another one i think they st they started here i think I have one of their songs from Punk Socks, uh, which I still have that CD. Back then, I would say, yeah, they were they were a skate punk band, which I wouldn't, I didn't like anyway. I don't like this anyway, but they comfortably moved over here. And there's no way I'll get into this too. Um, clearly, this sound is completely different than this sound. And remember, music should dominate the whole like what is punk. It's, it is music. It is also an attitude. There's also an aesthetic component. It is. And music should dominate. That should be the most of it. And this and this, all of these sound like these bands, there's similarities here. There's similarities here. There's similarities here, like between these guys. There's similarities between Discox and Defectives. There's, there's similarities here. There's similarities here. But from here to even here, you know, like these bands could be similar. These bands are similar, but you're lying to yourself if you're saying that it's a fashion thing or anything else. These bands are wholly different across this board, and I'm trying to cover the whole spectrum, and this is how I view it. This is how I see it. Again, here is kind of like a blind spot to me, so if anybody knows more or like better examples of gothic punk, please enlighten me. Psycho Billy I'm good with. I just kind of didn't have any more room. I could have put a whole bunch more bands here um again i freaking love psycho billy they're they're you know there's a lot of these people listening to this too and this so again um like i was saying to the left of this line and i still kind of don't consider it but i think now they are in the general lexicon and like i was saying these right here tend to be the more purest or the punk police as they used to call us uh in like the 90s I think I think Greg Graffin had made a comment about oh these people, like th there was a lot of um, passive aggressive kind of shit talking for a while, and I'm gonna get into some of the songs where it was not passive aggressive. It was like calling out the band straight up. Um, I do not consider no doubt pop punk, mighty mighty Boston's, and I do not consider them ska punk. They are pop ska. They're not here. They shouldn't be included anywhere here. They're not here. They're punk adjacent. They're something else. Um, yeah, they are. They are. These are pop ska. No doubt it has nothing to do with punk rock. I don't know why. I think they, there was a video of them covering Bad Brains, like, 15, eighteen years ago or something. It was terrible. It was terrible. It's terrible. So yeah, this is my world where I kind of lived. Mostly I lived here. I love Psycho Billy. I like all like all these bands, and there's a handful of these that I like. Suicide Machines are one of those people that like to talk crap over here, but we'll get into that. 
So, drama and infighting. Drama and infighting. So, like I said, one of the things that would happen is every so often, one of these kids from this here would go to this sh one of these shows over here. And who would be there but Douche Canoe over here? Oh, hey, bro. I know Krav Maga. I came here in my race truck. What do you think you're doing here? Get out of here. Wah, wah. And, yeah, I, I saw it all the freaking time. These these douche canoes here pushing around these kids that are half their age and half their size. They didn't really mess with the skins at all. It, it was this group. And that's why I don't know if that's changed over the years. I don't know if that's still there. I saw it. And even, some like I said, like Agnostic Front, some of the, I, I, I saw H2O a couple times. I like them. Um, bad brains it's it's in some of these bands that have more wide appeal but they're still kind of here pennywise too um where this stuff would happen i i have no interest in ever seeing any of these other bands maybe pennywise these guys are not like bros or douches they're they're they're, they're cool um but uh that's their crowd i don't like and it they tend to be the aggressors in those situations these guys do have a bit of a or at least when I was in the scene, a bit of um, we're the real punk kind of attitude. And um, the, these guys are just way too aggressive, way too bro-y. And uh, I'm not a fan of that. So, again, with the drama and the infighting, um, one, one example, uh, Defiance wrote a really scathing song about Rancid. Uh, I think it was on their... I, I can't remember. It was the, the all-black album um well, let's look at it right it's happened before now it's happening again rancid rotten bastards fucking trying to cash in on the tv and on the radio cover of spin magazine how far is it going to go exploding punk rock to the useless fucking masses with mass media saturation and financial fucking backing we won't be fooled by our prepackaged rebellion bought and sold by corporate fuckheads when you work with the enemy that makes you the same kind of scum who has robbed our fucking movement from the very day it has begun is you Right, right, yourself, right to the bank. We all know you're just a ripoff. Radio, radio, specifically, that's one of their songs. What a load of shit. And by the way, what the fuck's the radio have to do with it? So, as you can see, this is like a shots fired type of thing. But again, because Rancid is one of the bands that has been all over the board and so involved with a lot of bands. Um, interesting thing here, Lars Fredrickson produced Clip 45's uh, album, Tales from the Clip. And these guys were label mates when they were both on Punko Records. So it's it's a little... And I know for a fact that many of these guys are still friends. I went and saw Defiance uh, a couple months ago at Long Beach. Just a show that happened out of nowhere. And Clip 45 guys were there, of course. You know, you know they played with these guys, label mates. Um, great show. You know, so it's, it gets into these weird kind of situations. Um, I... It, Looking back, I don't know if that was childish or what it was, but um, I'll admit that this is, again, where I lived. And part of me, I harbored that too. I don't know. Maybe I did my own shit talking, but let's not get into that. <laughs> so, uh, oh, and again, uh, Clip 45 uh, toured with Bad Religion. Bad Religion label mates with uh, Rented. There is one lyric where, uh, in the Grey Race album, Bad Religion talks about something about a Native American chief getting shot, and then the, the Mohawk Chain Leather Brigade cried out after the government. I, I still to this day don't understand that lyric. If anybody knows what they mean, uh, let me know. Because uh, I don't know. Suic Suicide Machines uh, are another band that did their fresh air of crap talking. Let's read this. I'm probably, hopefully, uh, going to get banned for this, whatever. So, well, you're just like a club, that word, wearing Doc Martens. Get a pair of chuckas. I didn't know what chuckas were. I had to look that up. Or some checkerboard slip-ons. Worship Jeff Spicoli, which is the guy from Fast Times at Richmond High, not Chris Cornell. Don't know what they mean here by that, okay? Whatever. Uh, get a pair of Vans or God will send you to hell. You think Doc Martens are the coolest since someone sliced a loaf of bread in someone else's kitchen. The plain truth is you just plain suck. So why should I tell you not to waste a hundred bucks? 
you know, don't wear no Doc Martens, can't wear no Birkenstocks. Get ch- I don't know why they're such fans of Chucka Boots. Chucka Boots boots look like hipster shoes to me. Um, now, leave that to I don't know what they think that that, that makes these guys uh, posers or whatever it is. Uh, here's the thing: I I do own several pairs of Doc Martens. My first pair I got in 1996, made by union workers in England, and I still have those. So 1996, 10, 20, 17, 18 years I've had those shoes. Makes me wonder how many pairs of Vans made by kids in sweatshops in Vietnam or Indonesia, wherever they're made, these guys have gone through. So I don't know what the point of this song was. I know the casualties took crap because they wrote a song about their hair, but that was more because just like these guys were pushing around these guys and all these rocks being thrown this way, a bad religion referring to these guys as the punk police... I think the casualty is saying something like that was more of like a, yeah, so this is what, how we look, and leave us alone. So, and, and I will say this, the more you go from, um, when you're going from right to left, you get more of those selling out accusations, like I was talking about. And from left to right, you get the accusations of, oh, you're a fashion punk, you're a poser, you live with your mom, you're this and that. Um, so this is kind of how the drama goes. Sellouts. Is this way, uh, fashion punk poser that way, uh, and that's just how it is or how it was. I don't know how much this still happens, um, but uh, this happened for a long time. So you know, and you know what was sad is is there's been a lot of effort to have unity between punks and skins. I what I really don't like is when skins fight punks here. I cannot stand that. That is heartbreaking to me. Um, I think mo- most of them, um, it's a very specific group of these guys and it's typically, you know how I said agnostic front is also has some oi stuff. So there's a group of people that are into some of the oi, but mostly they're in hardcore. So that kind of crossover group, those are usually the ones starting the shit. The more pure oi skins that are into stuff like this tend not to do that it's that group i feel like and this is not the band's fault that bring them over here is what causes some of that some of that here and i hate that i really do so hopefully that doesn't happen anymore but who knows so oh so here is a little story about more drama um I, it might have not been newfound glory it might have been blue collar special but i do remember in uh this was very disappointing. R- Rancid was... Ben Freeman's just my favorite bass player forever. And my first chance to see them was at... I think it was 99 Warp Tour uh, at the LA Sports Arena. Three songs in, somebody gets injured, and Rancid went on, you know, oh, we're not going to keep playing like some heavy metal band that only wants to sell shirts. Somebody's hurt. Get medics in there, whatever. And it just took so long, like, I don't know, Lars started trying to play... Um, uh, Wars and like uh, an acoustic type deal, and that was they played those three songs, they didn't play anything during that like hi- hiatus. They they basically ran out of time, but I guess to to keep the crowd entertained, Lars said something about like, hey, why don't you get up for Newfound Glory? It might have been Blue Collar Special. Thinking back, and uh, the whole crowd booed. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty funny. Like, um, yeah, it it might have been Blue Collar Special. If anybody was there, I think it was ninety nine. Uh, it might have been 2000. L.A. Coliseum Warp Tour. Um, I, I ended up not getting to see Rancid play like a full show until like 2007 or something. And it, and it was wondrous because I, I waited a very long time to see that band. And I just kept missing them because I was stuck in El Paso and they weren't coming through. So and I was in California for Warp Tour that year. And that was my first chance and it was like stopped after three songs. So now let's talk about what is not punk. So, grindcore is not punk. Grindcore is hardcore plus grind metal, uh, and you end up with grindcore. So, not punk. Reggae is not punk. It's not even punk adjacent. It's unrelated. Sometimes you'll have a band, like I think Conflict and certainly Rancid and some other bands that will have reggae songs. That doesn't mean reggae is punk rock. And also because like bands... 
uh, like Buju Banton and some other bands are on Hellcat, that doesn't mean reggae is punk rock. That just means that that label hires reggae acts, right? When you speed up reggae, you get ska. Ska is not punk either. Ska is ska. Ska is nothing to do with anything with punk rock. So when you mix ska with punk, then you get ska punk. And that is punk. Because it's the fusion of ska plus punk. It's like saying, uh, mixing red and blue isn't blue. Well, it is part blue because, or, uh, get, yeah, get, getting purple. Purple is not blue at all. Yeah, purple is purple, but you still have blue in it, so. Uh, rockabilly is not punk. Confusing here, I think, is psychobilly, which is rockabilly plus punk, and you get psychobilly. But rockabilly itself is not punk. I've met people who are way into rockabilly, rockabilly who are, like, from Nashville, they know nothing outside of punk. Like, I, I would almost put Elvis here. Elvis is certainly not punk. In fact, Elvis would have probably thought these are all a bunch of weirdos or something. Um, so, then, uh, yeah. It, so, I was going to get into, like, punk adjacent, which is uh, pretty much these kinds of bands. Now, Rancid, again, yeah, is a very important band. It's one of my favorite bands still to this day. Uh, I don't listen too much to their new stuff, and like I said, I have to buy their new album that came out last year. Um, but this is a band that they have songs that are all over the place. They have skate punk songs, they have hardcore songs, they have ska punk songs, they have reggae songs. Um, Life Won't Wait had a bunch of reggae stuff on there. They have ska songs, they have psychobilly songs. Um, they've done, I don't know if they have oi songs, but their members have gone on and made uh, oi bands. Uh, they have some songs that are uh, chaos punk. Um, and also, if you look at like who Lars Fredrickson, he he was a member of uh, Old From Casuals and Lars and the Bastards, who are, those are oi bands. And he's also went on to produce, he produced The Business, he produced Antiheroes, he produced Dropkick Murphys. Dropkick Murphys, I think I left him off the list. Some would argue that they're all your chaos or street punk. Um, I could see that. I could see the argument. But I kind of... I, I put them under vanilla punk. Some would say because, oh, they were on that soundtrack with... Um, yeah, in that Martin Scorsese movie, uh, The Departed. Um, they're either here or they're, they're, they're over here somewhere. But uh, Lars produced them. Lars produced Agnostic Front. Lars produced Clip 45, The Forgotten, the UK subs, Swinging Utters. This is all stuff Lars did. Then you have Matt, who went on to do Devil's Brigade, which is over here. Um, then you had both Matt and Tim, who are not IB, who are here. Then you had Matt and Tim also over here in Transplants, Tim Time Bomb. You had Tim win a Grammy with Pink. So this band is all over the place. So it's, it's, it's fitting, I think, that they be here. I think this band, more than any other band... I know, uh, I know. Conflict has like a couple reggae songs, but they're not. They don't stray that much from that. And just like Case, I'll have some ska songs. It's it's almost like more like an oi ska, which is a weird. It's not even even a real thing. Um, and and same with uh, the Foreskins with like Plastic Gangster, right? Um, that's technically kind of a ska. Um, because skinheads used to be into ska, which is where I think a lot of the confusion, oh, well, oi, skinheads were into this, and then this came out, but ska, I'm sorry, it's just, I just don't put it under punk. I think it's a different, even though some of the, there are some fans that like it, it's not in the genre. So let's look at some of these important labels. Let's, probably the bigger ones, um, I would say Epitaph, which is, um, and these two bands are probably the biggest um, for the scene. No effects, oop, no effects with, no effects with with Fat Mike doing Fat Records, and now the Punk Rock Museum, which is wonderful. I I was at Punk Rock Bowling this past year, and of course I had to stop here. The line was like a three hour wait, so I showed up with like way later, like much later in the day when the bigger bands were playing, and um, the, there was almost no line. But at like twelve, one, two, three in the afternoon. This, I mean, all the punk rockers in the world go there for this, and so the line was just insane. So Rancid, no, Tim, went on to start Hellcat. Um, no effects, again, Fat Mike, Fat Records. Uh, so uh, the, these uh, labels, 
some were more specific than others, like with Street Punk. Um, I would say you could argue with, like, Hellcat had U.S. bombs and, like, uh, Pressure Point, I think, had some stuff on there. The Business um, had some stuff. So I would say Hellcat is here under the Street Punk umbrella. Punk Core definitely was big. GMM, TKO, ADD Charge, BYO Records. TKO and BYO, I'd say, I think they had some Psycho Billy stuff on there too. Hellcat had Psycho Billy stuff. Tiger Army was there. Um, they had a couple of gothic punk bands on here. Um, I can't think of any right now, but they had a couple. Uh... Epitaph, again, Vanilla Punk, they were very big. They were very big with Epitaph and, I think, Fat Records more than anyone else. They were like the kings of uh, skate punk. Hardcore, again, Epitaph and Victory Records were big for hardcore. Scott Punk, um, Hellcat was big with that, too. Hellcat also signed a lot of reggae bands. Um, and this type of stuff here, uh, Kung Fu Records, I think, was really where Bubblegum Punk and Pop Punk... Uh, sort of lived. I would say Kung Fu, you could probably put them here as well. Um, High Standard was a band that I liked for a while because they had a good sense of humor. They're from Japan. Uh, I didn't put them, I didn't list them, but they're, they're a band. I think they were on Fat Records, actually. I think maybe they started on Kung Fu. I can't remember exactly. And uh, let's get into some of the aesthetics. So, yeah, here you have your hardcore crew. You have your straight edge dude, right? And then you have your hardcore tough guy in his uh, raised truck that he raised himself, which is why the wheel falls off. 30 years old, works at UPS, and lives with his mom, probably has a kid. Um, then you have your generic sort of skate punk, your vanilla punk guy often looks like this. Sometimes I have a studded leather jacket or a studded um, denim jacket, studded uh, canvas cargo kind of looking jacket. You have your ska punks over here. Oh, by the way, oh, man, I forgot what uh, website. I did not create these images. Um, I think, yeah, you're seeing sucks.com is where they came from. So you have your gothic punks over here. Psycho Billy, they didn't have one yet. They should make one. You have the, the it's it's very, uh, like, the over-accentuated rockabilly pompadours to, like, the extreme level. Then you got your oi skins, your cross punks, and your chaos punks. Your chaos and pogo punks kind of share share the look. Although I, f I feel like the uh, <laughs> the the Liberty Spikes dominate more in pogo, and the Mohawks dominate more in uh, chaos punk. So so that's how I view the punk rock scene. Maybe this was informative. Uh, Maybe this is redundant. Maybe you disagree with me. Who is this guy? How dare he? Who does he think he is telling everybody what is and isn't punk? So if you feel that way, let me know in the comments below. And I'll respond if I see it. Or if I care enough to. Because a lot of punk was not giving a shit. So this is how I see it. As 43-year-old guy who came in until in the late 90s. What's funny, when I, when I came into the scene in the late 90s, I was like, oh my god, I gotta go all the way back to 77. That was like 15 years ago. And then I bought as much back catalog as possible. anti Nowhere League is another band that I absolutely love, and I forgot to put them. They would go under Street Punk. Um, I can't believe I forgot to put them. They were one of the main old school bands that I loved. I'm so glad I got to see them at Showcase Theater. I'm in. There's a video of them playing there, and I'm I'm at that show, and I'm in the front somewhere. I haven't found myself in the video, but I'm there. Anyways, um, hope you guys liked the video. Like and subscribe. Leave your comments below, and I'll see you later. Okay, bye.